We're reading from the Mueller report. This is page seven. Post, and this is uh, chronicling uh, Russian attempts to mess with the elections. This, uh, page seven, post 2016 election. Immediately after the November 8 election, Russian government officials and prominent Russian businessmen began trying to make inroads into the new administration. The most senior levels of the Russian government encouraged these efforts. The Russian embassy made contact hours after the election to congratulate the president-elect and to arrange a call with President Putin. Several Russian businessmen picked up the effort from there. Kirill Dmitrev, the chief executive officer of Russia's Sovereign Wealth Fund, was among the Russians who tried to make contact with the incoming administration. In early December, a business associate steered Dmitrev to Eric Prince, a supporter of the Trump campaign and an associate of senior Trump advisor Steve Bannon. Dmitriev and Prince later met face-to-face -face in January 2017 in the Seychelles and discussed U.S.-Russia relations. During the same period, another business associate introduced Dmitriev to a friend of Jared Kushner, who had not served on the campaign of the transition team. Dmitriev and Kushner's friend collaborated on a short written reconciliation plan for the United States and Russia, which Dmitriev uh, implied had been cleared through Putin. The friend gave that proposal proposal to Kushner before the inauguration, and Kushner later, later gave copies to Bannon and incoming Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. On December 29, 2016, then-President Obama imposed sanctions on Russia for having interfered in the election. Incoming National Security Advisor Michael Flynn called Russian Ambassador Sergei Kislyak and asked Russia not to escalate the situation in response to the Obama sanctions. The following day, Putin announced that Russia would not take retaliatory measures in response to the sanctions at that time. Hours later, <clears throat> President-elect Trump tweeted, quote, great move on delay by V. Putin. The next day, on December 31st, 2016, Kislyak called Flynn and told him the request had been received at the highest levels and Russia had chosen not to retaliate as a result of Flynn's re request. On January 6, 2017, members of the intelligence community briefed President-elect Trump on a joint assessment draft and coordinated among the Central Intelligence Agency, FBI, and National Security Agency that concluded with high confidence that Russia had intervened in the election through a variety of means to assist Trump's candidacy in harm Clinton's. A declassified version of the assessment was publicly released that same day. Between mid-January 2017 and early February 2017, three congressional committees, the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, and the Senate Judiciary Committee, announced that they would conduct inquiries, or had already been conducting inquiries, into Russian interference in the election. Then FBI Director James Comey later confirmed to Congress the existence of the FBI's investigation into Russian interference that had begun before the election. On March 20, 2017, in open session testimony before HPSCI, Comey stated, I have been authorized by the Department of Justice to confirm that the FBI, as part of our counterintelligence mission, is investigating the Russian government's efforts to interfere in the 2016 presidential election. And that includes investigating the nature of any links between individuals associated with the Trump campaign and the Russian government, and whether there was any coordination between the campaign and Russia's efforts. As with any counterintelligence investigation, this will also include an assessment of whether any crimes were committed. End of quote from Comey. The investigation continued under then-Director Comey for the next seven weeks until May 9, 2017, when President Trump fired Comey as FDI, FBI director, an action which is analyzed in Volume 2 of this report. On May 17, 2017, Acting Attorney General Rod Rosenstein appointed the special counsel and authorized him to conduct the investigation that Comey had confirmed in his congressional testimony, as well as matters arising directly from the investigation and any other matters within the scope of 28 CFR 604A, which generally covers efforts to interfere with or obstruct the investigation. President Trump reacted negatively to the special counsel's appointment. He told advisors that it was the end of his presidency and sought to have Attorney General Jeff Sessions, Jefferson Sessions, recuse from the, uh, unrecuse from the Russia investigation and to have the special counsel removed and engaged in efforts to curtail the special counsel's investigation and prevent the disclosure of evidence to it, including through public, public and private contacts with potential witnesses. Those and related in actions are described and analyzed in volume two of the report. The special counsel's charging decisions.
In reaching the charging decisions described in Volume 1 of the report, the office determined whether the contact it found, conduct it found amounted to a violation of federal criminal law chargeable under the principles of federal prosecution. The standard set forth in the Justice Manual is whether the conduct constitutes a crime, if so, whether admissible evidence would probably be sufficient to obtain and sustain a conviction, and whether prosecution would serve a substantial federal interest that would not be adequately served by prosecution elsewhere or through non-criminal alternatives. Section 5 of the report provides detailed explanations of the office's charging decisions, which contain three main components. First, the office determined that Russia's two principal interference operations in the 2016 presidential election, the social media campaign and the hacking and dumping operations, violated U.S. criminal law. Many of the individuals and entities involved in the social media campaign have been charged with participating in a conspiracy to defraud the United States by undermining, through deceptive acts, the work of federal agencies charged with regulating foreign interference in U.S. elections, as well as related counts of identity theft. It's the Mueller report.